Most budget builds have some amazing priced performance, especially when using old used hardware. But there isn't usually much room for upgradability. Dell Optiplexes, old server equipment, it's pretty much set in stone until you're ready to build a whole new PC. But today, I wanted to squash all that. We are going to build an easy to copy build that is not only light on your budget, but will also allow you to upgrade every part of it down the line. And I'll go over my recommendations for upgrades as well. Let's go over everything you're going to need right after this video sponsor. When you install Windows on your Steam Deck or any other PC for that matter, you're going to need to activate it to unlock all the settings. Why spend a ton of money for a code when you can use the sponsor of today's video, SCD Key? You can purchase Windows keys at a large discount, and to get 25% off your order, use code JASON, that's J-A-S-O-N, to get 25% off your order. After purchasing, you'll get your code pretty much instantly and be able to unlock your computer's full potential. And remember that all Windows 10 Pro users can upgrade to Windows 11 for free at any time in the future using these keys. Just take your code, go to your Windows activation menu, pop it in, and boom. Windows is activated, and you should be on your way, thanks to SCD Key. Building a PC that is upgradable is going to be inherently a little more expensive, so the budget I'm setting forward for this video is going to be around $450 US. But a lot of these things can be swapped out for either slightly cheaper or slightly more expensive components. So just use this video as a jumping off point, or maybe get some ideas on how to get the best deals. If you want to pick up anything in this video, links to everything will be down in the video description below. Let's start with a motherboard. Inherently, we need a motherboard that has access to a lot of different chips at various levels of performance. The newer Intel LGA1700 chipset is able to handle 12th, 13th, and 14th gen CPUs, which is a pretty good upgrade path, and it allows you to choose between DDR4 and DDR5 depending on your own personal goals and budget. But at this price, point, I wanted to go with the tried and true, the AM4 chipset from AMD. AM4 has been around for a really long time. The first CPU and motherboards using it were first released at the end of 2016, which might not seem like that long ago, but eight years is light years when it comes to PC hardware. Despite being this old, AMD is still releasing new CPUs that support the AM4 chipset, meaning there's a chance you could have bought a motherboard in 2017 and it would still theoretically, support a processor that was released in 2024. It's honestly really amazing. Now, we could simply pick up the cheapest Ryzen compatible motherboard we could find, something like the A320M, but those budget boards leave a lot to be desired when it comes to upgradability. Only two RAM slots, bad VRM cooling, and no BIOS flashback are just some of the features you're leaving on the table. So let's go with something a little bit more modern. This is a B550M motherboard from Gigabyte. This is more of a mid-range motherboard, but it has everything we'll ever need for the lifetime of the machine. PCIe Gen 4 SSD support, a dual M.2 slots, four DIMM slots, and has what Gigabyte calls Q Flash Plus, which means if you ever need to update the BIOS on the motherboard, you can do so without having any RAM, CPU, or graphics card installed. Just the motherboard and power supply are needed. The B550 might not be the best of the best when it comes to features, but it supports every Ryzen CPU ever and is a realistic place to start this upgradable budget build. You can buy the B550M new, but it can often be found used on Amazon Warehouse for a slight discount. The motherboard I received worked perfectly, had no missing pieces, and saved me about 12 bucks off the price, bringing my total down to $78 from Amazon Warehouse. Let's grab some RAM. We're gonna go with two sticks of DDR4 RAM, totaling out to 16 gigs and has a speed of 3200 megatransfers per second. Nothing crazy, but it's pretty much all we will need for this build. We have four slots on our motherboard, so if you ever wanna upgrade to 32 gigs of RAM in the future, you can just buy another pair of these and throw them in. This set of RAM from Silicon Power only costs $33 brand new from Amazon. Now for CPUs, used Ryzen processors seem to be in less supply and higher price than their Intel counterparts. We could buy one brand new from Amazon, something like the Ryzen 5 5500 or 5600X would both work great here, but they are a little out of our budget. So I went to Micro Center and found a Ryzen 5 3600. This was an absolute fan favorite CPU a few years ago, and it's still plenty powerful to this day. It's a six core 12 thread processor that can boost up to 4.2 gigahertz, and this should be able to handle basically any graphics card in our budget. I got this one on sale with the stock CPU cooler for only $80. Not an amazing deal, but it's a pretty good bargain for a pretty good component, brand new. 
For storage, we have a PCIe 4 slot to work with here, two of them actually, so I went with the sensible MSI Spatium 450, which is a 500 gig PCIe Gen 4 SSD that has some pretty fast speeds for the price, and comes from a reliable company. Feel free to buy as much storage as you think you'd need, but 500 gigs is a good starting off point at this budget. Now this is an upgradable PC, so we can in good conscience pick a power supply that is too low wattage or too low on the tier list. We want something reliable and with a little more headroom than we currently need. The Thermaltake 600 watt GX2 is perfect for what we need here today and is reliable enough to not damage any future components. If you have the budget, I recommend grabbing a power supply that exceeds what you currently need on your rig, only if you plan to upgrade in the next six months to a year. Getting a power supply that can handle pretty much any GPU that's out there would only cost us like $50 more, and usually that comes with like a 10 or 12 year warranty. Now, $50 is a huge portion of your budget, but considering it's going to last you 10 plus years, it's basically nothing in the long run. So if you really do intend to upgrade in the near future, it might be worth just buying the power supply now so you won't have to deal with selling your old one. But we're on a tight budget here, so the GX2 will be good enough for today and for a lot of graphics card upgrades out there. The biggest downside is that the cables are pretty ugly on this guy, so feel free to buy some PSU cable extensions or just do what I did and wrap some electrical tape around the ugly parts. It doesn't look great when you get close to it, but with the dark side panel on it, it all just kind of blends in together and you can't really tell. I utilized Amazon Warehouse for this PSU and got it used for only $45. The original packaging has seen better days, but it came in otherwise like new condition. For the case, I like to try to pick cases that may not be as popular, so I chose the Mag Vampiric 100 from MSI, a pretty good case with a pretty bad name. It's a mid-tower case, so it can handle motherboards up to ATX in size, easy to clean magnetic dust filters, mesh front panel, tempered glass side panel, and a cute little RGB strip going down the front that can be controlled with the push of a button. It can support GPUs up to 300mm in length, so will pretty much fit most graphics cards in reason. It also supports AIO water cooling up to 240mm, so if you ever upgrade the CPU down the line, there's ample room to cool it. At the end of the day, it's a metal box that holds all of your components. Don't overthink it. I actually got this on Woot.com, which is a website we have not discussed on this channel before. Woot, which is now owned by Amazon, is essentially just a deal website that has weird flash sales on random things. Could be home goods, food, or even computer components. The items being sold on there are direct from Amazon, so it's all totally safe. I got the MSI case on there for only $40, which is a really good price for a case of this quality. The only downside of the case is that it came with only a singular ARGB fan for the exhaust and then another fan for the intake in the front. If you're worried about cooling, feel free to throw another fan in here for the intake, but for this build, these two fans will be enough. Last but not least, let's talk about the graphics card. Using a Ryzen 5 3600, we actually have a lot of headroom for what we can use. If you have the money, I'd say you could go as high as a RX 6700 XT and be totally fine, but that's a bit outside of our budget. I was able to grab this GTX 1080 Ti online for only $138 with free shipping, which was honestly a, a pretty good deal. I think the price was so low because it's just a simple blower style cooler, which is honestly one of the worst ways to cool a graphics card, but hey, it works really well and I didn't have any issues with cooling yet. Alternatively, you could find a RX 5700 XT for around $140 or $150 and have comparable performance. 1080 Ti we chose was also a fan favorite for a few years and for good reason. It's just an incredibly well-made card that is still relevant in 2024. I think we might even be able to do some gaming in 1440p with this bad boy. And that's it. Let's go over the price breakdown and some benchmarks and then back here to talk about how you can upgrade each component in the future.
We've got some amazing performance in this thing, and a pretty good looking PC in my opinion. That $450 price tag allowed us to use more modern components that are going to last more than just a few years. But hey, I did say this thing is upgradable, so let's talk about how to do that. This B550 motherboard will be able to handle any AM4 CPU you can think of, so if you want a slight upgrade, then the 5600X will be pretty good. But if you want the best of the best, you can throw in a Ryzen 5800X3D in this motherboard no problem, which was at one point the strongest CPU for gaming in the world, and is still insanely good even to this day. If you do end up getting a stronger CPU, you should probably grab a better cooler too. The SC214XT or any other similar four heat pipe coolers will be just fine for most CPUs, but if you go with something like the 5800X3D, you might need something a little more. Something like a 240mm AIO will not only help you cool that bad boy down, it also looks very impressive. If you want to upgrade the graphics card, you'll have to pair it with whatever CPU you decided to purchase. If you grab the 5600X, feel free to go as high as an RX 6800 XT or even RTX 3070. And if you got the beefy 5800X3D, then pretty much any GPU you can imagine will work just fine. Just make sure it actually fits in the PC case you purchased. In terms of storage, any PCIe Gen 4 SSD would fit in that second M.2 slot for you or even Gen 3 if you just want some fast game storage and don't intend to be constantly moving large files. There's also a ton of SATA ports on our board, so if you get a good deal on a 2.5 inch SSD, it might be worth getting just to store all those games. For memory, you can always just grab a second pair and throw it in the extra slots. Do know, if you decide to buy RAM with faster timings, your computer will automatically reduce the speed to match your other sticks. So don't think you can buy a $200 pair of RAM and think it will improve your overall performance. As long as your original RAM is still in the machine, it's going to bring the new RAM down to its level. A bad apple spoils the bunch. If $450 is a little out of your budget and you just want to build a PC that will play all of your favorite games at 1080p, check out these videos here where we build out some sick gaming PCs at some very low budgets. Please like the video if you liked it and get subscribed for more technology content. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching.